And on this show, AirPods Max 2 rumors, M2 Core Technologies A15 or A16, Apple Silicon Mac Pro Insanity, is the Mac Mini Pro still coming, what's the studio displays A13 for, and Ultra Fusion coming across the Apple Silicon range. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Again, we're doing your questions in the show, so let's get into it. Randomness R asks IK Vances, I love my pair of AirPods Max ever since I got them and I don't want to use my Pros anymore, battery life is insane. However, I did notice that even in the case overnight, it loses about 15% of charge, which is weird, but either way, I'm charging them every three to four days and the sound is amazing, got them on sale, $400 off on Amazon, hopefully the second gen will get better battery life. Most headphones in that price range pushing 40 hours on a single charge. I mean, they've done it on Beats Studio 3s. Any updates on the Max 2? So the only things we've heard on AirPods Max 2, well, there's a couple of potential product lines that it might be. So there could be the more budget version, which is the one that we were hearing about as the AirPods Studio Sport, I think, originally. Surprised kind of now that they didn't go with the studio name because that would have made a lot of sense. Maybe we will get an AirPods Max, which is the higher end version, and then an AirPods Studio, which is the kind of mid-range, like an Air. We've been work trying to work out what Studio means in terms of price brands, but uh, very difficult to know. Um, the other things that we're expecting to see on the Max 2, the next generation of AirPods Max, is actually to see what we expected on the original ones. So getting rid of the digital crown and the button and basically getting touch controls on the surface of the ears themselves. I think that's going to be pretty compelling when that happens. It's going to be pretty magical looking basically the sides of your head being a trackpad and of course we all want lossless on these things. Uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. I wouldn't have thought... Uh, Going up to 40 hours of battery life, though, that might be a push. And CoolJoe1920 asks, IK Vances, do you think the M2 will be based on the A15 architecture or the upcoming A16 architecture? The OCD in me wants the Apple Silicon Pro Mac Pro to have the best multi-core and single-core performance possible. And yes, we all want that. Um, now, the difficulty is the M2 chips have already been made and the A15s, uh, sorry, the A16s probably haven't been yet. So that makes it a little bit tricky. The M2s are pretty much already on the shelf, almost certainly. We know they've already been test uh, producing A16 chips, A17 chips, uh, and the M3, I believe. So all of this stuff is already well into the pipeline. It is coming down the line, and I expect that it will be based on the A15 chip which is the one that's in the iphone 13 there's too many numbers and too many that don't kind of line up it's getting a bit confusing however that's what i expect the same kinds of cores but more of them in the m2 and in the m2 pro and the max and the ultra and that's kind of it so each of the cores will be faster in that generation and there'll be more of the cores as well so you get a double whammy of speed improvements but no, I don't expect it to be based on A16 either. It's going to be A15, which is the current iPhone version. <sighs> so confusing. Team Kinetics asks, IK Vance's leaked benchmarks last year suggested a four times uh, M1 Max configuration. Peak performance heavily implied that M1 Ultra is the final M1 based chip. Do you think the four chip version was just a prototype that would never hit the market? Or could we see a Mac Pro with four M2 Max chips next year? What else do you think we could see in a Mac Pro? Now, just to be clear, I don't think M1, uh, I don't think we saw benchmarks for these chips. I think what we saw was rumors from Mark Gurman and company that we would have 40 cores, 32 performance, and eight uh, efficiency cores in these chips, which, based on the way that uh, the M1 Ultra looks, Basically, you jam two chips together and uh, the system sees it as a single chip because uh, the interconnects are so fast. Now, it could well be that that's still going to happen the same way, but you're going to have a pair of M1 Ultras that aren't necessarily interconnected directly because you could have it working as almost its own mini network of systems uh, that offloads stuff to the second SOC. Um, not 100% sure, but that's the way that I would assume it will happen. But as far as I know, no, no benchmarks have actually been leaked for that. Just 
uh, rumours on what the configuration is likely to be. And Paul Davidson asks, IK Vance's any rumours of Mac Mini M1 Pro? Studio M1 Max is great, but my own work does not require the Max power. Thank you. So this is something that we're probably going to get later in the year. I know it's a little bit annoying. Uh, it could be that if they are going to keep the enclosures the same, actually dropping an M1 Pro version of the uh, Mac Mini just on the website might not be unrealistic. We know what the enclosure looks like. We know what the chip already does. That could be a website refresh, and that would be the first Apple Silicon website refresh. Interesting. Um, but we will see. I understand uh, your frustrations. M1 is very powerful on its own, so it might be that that's enough for you. Um, worth checking out. And Zaki Johari asks, I gave answers, can you dig a little deeper into what it means to have the A13 Bionic chip in the Apple Studio display? For now, we know that it powers center stage and page spatial audio, but I suspect there's more to it, especially as the product landing page mentions it supports Hey Siri. With an A13 integrated into it, I think the Studio display makes a subtle departure from the monitor and is entering smart monitor territory. I'm also wondering if the studio display may support AirPlay and Universal Control, which would effectively make it like a wireless monitor. I also feel that Apple could support additional features down the road just by having the A13 in it, which would extend the value of the studio display further. And this is a really good point as well. Uh, the studio display itself is quite a piece of kit. The A13 inside, as far as we know, looks after power management. It looks after the camera, the spatial audio, the microphones. Um, but yes, Hey Siri is something that supports it and it, it actually means that you can then use Hey Siri on older machines that didn't have access to that. Now, I, I would love for it to be um, kind of working to bolster the, the power of your system. I don't think it will be. It might take a little bit of the pressure off. As we said earlier, it could be that that will help to allow 120 hertz in future by interpolating extra frames but right now until we actually get it in people's hands it's very difficult to know exactly what it does. Evan Rogers asks I gave answers how long do you think it will be until Apple implements the ultra fusion interposer technology down the stack? No reason Apple's couldn't split their chips even more. You're right, it's a very good question. Uh, I honestly don't know. It's not going to be within the M1 series. It will possibly be in m2 and we had a question earlier about whether these chips uh, including the m2 could be part of a larger die so actually all of these chips are being made at the same time and everything is being made as an m1 ultra and then you just punch the parts out of it that you need to make your chiplets to make your m2s and to make your m2 pros and your m2 maxes that's a quite a good possibility and i think that's a reasonable uh, thing to assume i'm not 100 percent sure what other parts of the system they would be doing that with but i'm sure there is a way and that's going to be it for this show guys thank you for watching if you've got a question for a future show hashtag i cave answers down in the comment section thanks to the patreons over here if you want to join them icavedave.com forward slash patreon and if you want a cool apple style t-shirt from me icavedave.com forward slash merch thanks so much for watching we'll see you in the next one